Welcome everyone. Welcome to the webinar about the conversation between us about us. We are so glad you're here. If you would please, if you've made it, congratulations, A plus for being on time. Please introduce yourself in the Zoom chat. We would love to know uh, your name, your organization, the city and state that you're representing. And for those who are new to Zoom, this is also sort of a, a opportunity to make sure you know where to find the chat function. It should be in your controls on Zoom and usually in the lower part of your screen. So uh, if you wanna go ahead and jump in there now with introducing yourself and throughout, please feel free to use this as a space to connect with one another, to share how you've been using the conversation um, and to let us know what you think of the resources and, and videos and pieces that we'll be sharing. I see Beth in Richmond. Hey Beth, you're a familiar name. I saw um, Laredo come by. I see Andrea from NACHO. Um, Erica, my sister from Laredo. How exciting. Florida Department of Health. Oh my goodness, this is great. Lots of familiar faces. So I'm just thrilled um, for those that we know and plenty of new contacts for us. Welcome, welcome everyone. So once again, for those who are just joining, we're inviting you to introduce yourself in the chat, type your name, organization, city, state, where you're from. We had RSVPs from over 40 states, including Alaska and Hawaii. So we are really excited to be reaching so many different areas of the country, bringing the conversation, and I believe a few international guests as well. Welcome everyone. Some housekeeping. Now that you know how to use the chat function, we just wanted to point out that the Q&A function in Zoom is a separate screen, a separate tab. So if you have a question you'd like us to answer, we are gonna do our best to have lots of time at the end to answer your questions. Please use the Q&A to ask any questions that you'd like us to follow up with and not the chat so we know where to look. Okay, let's go ahead and dive in. This is the conversation a public information campaign to dispel myths and provide accessible facts about COVID vaccines. Dr. Rhea Boyd, a pediatrician and public health advocate who you'll hear from shortly, and Dr. Reed Tuxen, a founding member of the Black Coalition Against COVID, developed the campaign together with KFF. KFF is very pleased to be presenting today's webinar with supporting partnerships from AIM, the Association of Immunization Managers, Welcome to all of our public health leaders who are coordinating our vaccine responses and affiliated with AIM. ASTO, the Association of State and Territorial Health Officials. These are the folks who run all of your state health departments. Not an easy job over the last year. NACHO, the National Association of County and City Health Officials, the group that unites all our local public health departments. And NFIC, the National Public Health Information Coalition, the network of public health communicators helping people lead healthier lives in healthier communities. We would not have been able to connect with many of you today if it weren't for our, our partners' help in sharing the conversation and promoting today's webinar. So we really are grateful for their partnership. Today's agenda, our goal is to give you information and tools about the conversation to bring the campaign to your community. Whether through a tweet or streaming the videos as part of your events, we have a great lineup of speakers today, including voices from the field. We're going to cover the campaign background and assets, including a free digital community toolkit, as well as examples of community engagement online and in person with the conversation. We'll close things out with plenty of time to answer your questions. I am joined today by an amazing group of speakers with diverse perspectives and incredible experiences. We are so grateful to each of them for joining us today and look forward to hearing about the ways they've been using the conversation. Now, it is my great honor to introduce Dr. Rhea Boyd, a pediatrician based in the San Francisco Bay Area, our physician advisor and close collaborator who has been involved in every step of the development and dissemination of the campaign. Dr. Boyd, we invite you to share some opening remarks to set the stage for the rest of today's conversation. We look forward to hearing the origin of the campaign and your insights about information needs related to COVID-19 vaccines in the US today. Thank you. Thank you so much for that introduction, Robin. Hi, everyone. Welcome. We're so delighted that you've joined us today to talk more about the conversation and how you can use it. What I'm going to do is just give you a brief backstory on how we came here. Um, and then I'm excited to hear more of the conversation we all have today. Um, so the conversation 
represents the work of Black clinicians across the country who came together before any of the COVID vaccines received emergency use authorization to notice that we were concerned about the misinformation targeting Black folks online. And so we wanted to create a digital campaign that provided credible information about the COVID vaccines to Black folks in particular. Part of our impetus to do this is because that we knew that while many folks were labeling Black people as vaccine hesitant, quote unquote, that instead we understood that Black healthcare consumers and Black patients just have legitimate and um, completely relevant concerns about the COVID vaccines. And so this campaign features Black doctors, nurses, and researchers who respect those concerns and answer them with the urgency they really require. Um, this highlights a uh, um, uh, op-ed we were fortunate to publish in the New York Times to say like there is a way that we can respond to folks concerns and that way can narrow gaps in vaccine access and that's essentially what we've seen over the last few months um, through KFF data increasingly more and more black folks are interested in getting the COVID vaccine and so now the work is really to ensure that there is equitable vaccine access to everybody who's interested in receiving it. So we are delighted you guys joined us to talk more about how you can use the conversation. Unfortunately, I have to jump to another vaccine event, um, but I look forward to following up with all of you guys and making sure this platform is as useful to you as possible. Thank you so much for all your work. Thank you, Dr. Boyd. You are somehow miraculously able to be in multiple spaces at once. Um, and we appreciate you making time for this today and for everything that you've done to build out the conversation and make these resources. It has truly been a pleasure getting to know you personally and watching the impact of the conversation that you've helped create. Thank you, Robin. Have a great session, everyone. Thank you, thank you very much. Um, as I mentioned at the top of the webinar, the conversation between us about us is co-developed by the Kaiser Family Foundation or KFF together with the Black Coalition Against COVID. KFF focuses on health issues in the United States. And although we're frequently confused with the other Kaiser, Kaiser Permanente, we are not actually affiliated. And we are also not a grant making foundation which is another common misunderstanding based on our name. But we are a public charity uh, working in policy, polling, journalism and social impact media. And of course, for over a year now, COVID-19 has been a central focus for KFF across all of those areas. If you read almost any news stories about COVID-19 uh, COVID vaccine rollout or attitudes, you're very likely to see a reference to a KFF poll. KFF's COVID vaccine monitor fields surveys every couple of weeks and our colleagues provide deep analysis of attitudes and experiences related to the vaccines. In this chart, you can see some of our most recent data of the percent of respondents who say they have already gotten the vaccine or plan to get it as soon as it is available to them. You may note the lowest bars are among youth, 18 to 29, many of whom only recently became eligible, as well as Republicans with both lower than 50%. Enthusiasm for getting the COVID-19 vaccine continues to grow among people across racial and ethnic backgrounds with the largest increase this month among black adults. Over half of black adults, 55%, now say they've either gotten at least one dose of the vaccine or will get it as soon as they can. That's up from 41% in February and approaching the shares among Hispanic adults and white adults at 61 and 64% respectively. Back in January, when we were preparing to film the first installment of the conversation videos, half of all US adults said they were undecided or not planning to get a vaccine. So you see, we've come a long way in just three months. Our KFF polls were also showing that many in that undecided group had a lot of questions. They wanted more information. In particular, black and Hispanic audiences wanted more information about the safety and side effects of the vaccines, how effective they are, and whether it is possible to get COVID from the COVID vaccine. You can see here the percentages for each group across each of these themes. We made the conversation to address exactly these questions. And we asked about most trusted messengers. Across the board, doctors, nurses, and health, doctors, nurses, and healthcare providers topped the list. You can see this is true for each group. So with all of these insights informing our evidence base, KFF launched our Greater Than COVID initiative, 
building on over a decade of Greater Than AIDS public information response. Greater Than AIDS family giving you a shout out to those of you who have joined us. And the first installment of the campaign is Between Us, About Us. It's a series of over 50 video answers to frequently asked questions about the COVID vaccines produced with a dozen black healthcare workers. The campaign includes an anchor video hosted by comedian W. Kamal Bell with five minutes of the top information audiences are asking for. The California Healthcare Foundation, Commonwealth Fund, Sierra Health Foundation generously contributed funding to the production and are supporting distribution of this series. YouTube, Google, and Facebook are providing significant support for the campaign, including high visibility promotion on their platforms. So hopefully with all of that support, you have already seen this message and maybe that's why you came here today. Um, I promise you I've watched it over 50 times and I still laugh at all of the jokes. So if you've seen it before, and especially for those for whom this is the first time, we do wanna take five minutes to introduce you to all of the healthcare workers um, and show you what we call this anchor video that is, was part of the launch of the campaign. We'll tell you after this about some more resources and other videos that are also part of the campaign. So presenting to you the conversation between us about us. Hello, Black America and people who pay attention to what Black folks are doing. My name's W. Kamau Bell. There's good news out there. There's a COVID-19 vaccine, yay! But the bad news is as Black folks, it's hard to trust what's going on. So what do we do? Well we turn to people we can trust, black folks. But not just your uncle at the cookout. No, 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 actually not him at all. I'm talking about black scientists, black doctors, and black nurses. Okay, first question. The vaccine happened fast, like super fast, like Usain Bolt headed to the bathroom fast. Is that something we should be concerned about? Having an emergency authorization for these medications was critical, but that doesn't mean any steps were cut. Anything where money could be traded off for time, that was happening, like money was no object. They still have all of the rigor that they use for uh, approving any vaccine. So we can feel confident that the science is still there. The messenger RNA technology has been in development for the last 12 years. So even though you hear this thing about warp speed, believe me, that was not warp speed. And I think the data is real. It suggests it's highly effective. About a week or so after your second dose, the people who had gotten the placebo or who didn't get the true vaccine, their rates of coronavirus continued to climb, whereas the people who had gotten the vaccine, it just flattened out. And what about side effects? Uh, soreness from the injection site. I had a little bit of arm soreness. Arm sore? Is that a side effect? My arm's sore right now. The common things, soreness at the injection site, headache, fever, maybe a swollen lymph nodes. The second dose is when there's more common, those systemic side effects. Is this like one of those pharmaceutical commercials where at the end they talk real fast about the side effects and it's like, you're also gonna get hair from your eyeballs and vampirism. <laughs> My sister texted me um, the second day uh, after I got the first vaccine and I remember she was like, are you a zombie yet? And we just laughed like, no, I'm not. So the big answer is no. <laughs> and the reason being is we are not injecting the virus into your body. The vaccine is training your body. It is making those antibodies to fight that disease. So I view it as a, a you know, positive thing. So here's a question from everybody's uncle. And since I'm an uncle, it's a question for me too. Are the drug companies just trying to get rich off this? The drug companies will certainly get rich. Oh, well, drug companies are always trying to get rich, but that's not the point, right? That is really how a lot of our innovation happens. That is why the drug companies will spend millions upon millions in research. Were black and brown people a part of this process or was it only like white folks, you know, like NASCAR white folks? The trials were intentionally broad and inclusive. Yeah, black and brown folks have been recruited for the clinical trials. We have ensured that each of the four historically black medical schools, that we are all vaccine trial sites. So here's the big question. How much are you charging us for this vaccine? Right now, getting vaccinated is free. Free? Yes, it's free. <laughs> like free, free, free. It will be free. Like not even free 99. We have not charged anyone. Okay, should I be suspicious that you aren't charging us? No, because there are some things that the government invests in that um, for the good of the people. Taxpayers like you and I contributed to the development of, um, of these vaccines. 
What if I'm not worried about getting COVID-19? Like you could say, I never had smallpox. I've never had tetanus. Why do I need the shot? That's why we give vaccines. Vaccines are prevention. I pretty much tell people you're going to be exposed some, some kind of way, right? So you, might, you better be ready to fight. And what about you? Have you? Will you? I got my first dose uh, uh, about three weeks ago. I have not gotten the vaccine yet, but um, rest assured, uh, I'm anxiously waiting. I definitely will be getting vaccinated when my turn comes. I was scared getting it, and then after I got it, I was like, oh, well, I guess it wasn't that bad. <laughs> when the vaccine went in, I felt this intense amount of honor. Like a lot of people, I like to get my medical information from bizarre, dark corners of the internet that haven't been vetted. Is that a good idea? Oh dear. Please do not continue to do that. <laughs> that is definitely not a good idea. <laughs> Unfortunately on the internet, pretty much anyone can post anything. There are no microchips. There's no stealing of your DNA. No, none of that is happening. Thank you doctors. All right, I'll let you get back to work. And thank you for allowing me to ask you these questions. Oh, but before you go, just wanna let you know, your parents are super proud of you. It's all they can talk about. Hello. All right, I managed to play the video and get out of the video. So hopefully that was successful. Um, we would love to know if you have seen this before. I'm seeing in the chat, where can I get this PSA? And we are gonna tell you exactly the answer to all of that. The main message from this webinar is everything that you see is free and available to use. And we're today gonna give you the tools where to find them and how to use them. So we're curious, um, <clears throat> since some of you are old family to us, working with us on HIV for the last 10 years, and many of you are new, we're very curious, have you seen the, any parts of the conversation campaign? Did you recognize the video we just watched? Or maybe did you see one of the 50 FAQs where the providers answer an, a specific question? Um, if any of that looks familiar to you, please answer yes in this current poll or no, or if you're not sure, you can answer not sure. If you had seen the conversation before today, we're also curious in just a quick flash poll of whether you've used the materials uh, in your community. So yes, no, or not applicable because you hadn't seen it before today. So if you could um, answer those questions, we'll hold it open for just a few more seconds um, and then we'll see the results together. Looks like 75% have voted. I'm gonna give it five more seconds, five, four, three, two, one. Let's close the poll and see what the results are. So amazing. So 37% of you who responded uh, recognized some portion of that and 61%, so more, a majority did not. Fantastic. So glad that we showed it and now you know what's out there. Um, and 32 different respondents have used the conversation. Thank you for helping to extend the conversation to your communities. We hope you'll get more ideas of ways that you can use it today. Um, and also for those who, of you who have not yet used it, we hope that you'll discover some ways and get inspired. That's the, the whole reason that we're together. So um, I wanna show you one more resource. I, we showed you one video, again, there are over 50 um, on the website and, and YouTube. So to answer the question, where can I get this video? Easiest place to go is betweenusaboutus.org, the name of the campaign, Between Us About Us. It's also under our KFF umbrella of greaterthancovid.org slash the conversation. Um, so this is the website. You can find it there right now. And everything we show you today, toolkit and all the other pieces are also there. You can also find all of the individual FAQs. So this slide gives you a taste of what the what's there. So it goes from sort of the broad to why do we even need a vaccine? Is there a live virus? Um, what about the side effects? And then getting into specifics, what's mRNA, what's, what's emergency use authorization, uh, reproductive health impacts, questions about fertility, those kinds of things. So we source these from listening, from community conversations, from the providers themselves, questions that they were hearing in the community, um, and, and they are giving the answers. So these are all available on the website. There is also a locator. We know that once folks have the information they need to make a decision and decide they're ready for a vaccine, top questions are where and how do I get it? So we link in um, to the vaccinefinder.org website 
And we also list each state's hotline and their COVID vaccine resources, as well as other COVID information resources in this information in your state bar. So um, if you are representing a state, please double check that the information that we've pulled is the most current. We do review it every couple of weeks. It's a fast moving game, these COVID responses. So do let us know if you have something new that you'd like us to update there. And then you see the digital toolkit uh, that we'll spend quite a bit of time talking through today. That's where you can find all of these resources. And you can email us with any requests or interests in partnering. Because you're at this webinar today, if you registered and we have your email, we will automatically add you into our newsletter. So you don't all need to go do that. We'll automatically do that. Let us know. If you don't want to be on the newsletter, we can certainly unsubscribe you. Uh, but if you have colleagues or others that you want to make sure are getting our updates going forward, social media managers, communication leads, um, please encourage them to email us and, and join in the conversation ongoing. We are producing new videos all of the time including over the last couple of days, we filmed 10 different bilingual English and Spanish speaking healthcare workers to create a Latinx expansion of the conversation. And those will all be added and we'll be announcing when that's launching in just a couple of weeks. So for sure, uh, make sure that you're on our mailing list and stay in touch, check back frequently because um, we are evolving as we call it a living library and all of the latest will be here on this website. There are also links to our partners, to the CDC, uh, COVID Black and the COVID Prevention Network, a number of groups that have been working together with us both to create the campaign as well as providing other information resources. Okay, I think without further ado, I'm gonna turn it over to my colleague, Chelsea. You've heard enough of my voice. So let me take a pause and invite Chelsea to share some of the response to the campaign so far. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much, Robin, um, and good afternoon, everyone. It's really an honor to be here um, speaking to you about the conversation between us and about us. Um, I think what was so amazing to see when we launched the campaign was um, how much social media traction it got right away, especially on Twitter. And so um, on the slide, you can see several examples um, from our partners, including the National Medical Association, which is a membership organization for Black doctors. Um, we also have uh, the Vice President of Fair Count, uh, Janine Abrams McLean, which is a civic engagement um, organization working on voting mobilization in the South. Um, and then we also have experts from the American Medical Association, Made to Save, and COVID Whack. So instantly when we launched, it got a lot of great attention on social media. Um, and that's another great way to share the conversation um, with your own followers on Twitter, and Facebook, Instagram, and the like. Next slide, please. Um, also, our state and local um, county city health departments have gone in on joining the conversation as well. And so here are a few examples of um, the tweets from our state local health departments. Um, and of course, we have our partner associations here um, as well. So ASCO and uh, NATO. And next slide, please. In addition, um, we have uh, providers who have shared the conversation directly with their patients. And so here we have three examples of doctors describing how they're using the videos um, at specific moments um, of point of care to help build confidence um, in the vaccine with their patients. And next slide, please. So clearly you can see that social media is a great it's an inexpensive way to reach a lot of people at once. Um, so our websites, and so we have right here an example from the Virginia Department of Health's COVID Community Ambassadors Hub. Um, and so this is just one example of using a website to then put the conversation onto your website and bring um, attention to the campaign there. And of course, you know, there's relatively no cost to doing this. Um, you just simply need an embed code. Um, and we'll talk more about that. If you do need support or resources to get the conversation onto your website, um, we're more than happy to support with that. Next slide, please. 
Um, another simple example uh, for impact is adding the conversation um, into a newsletter. And so um, the National Public Health Information Coalition did just that. Um, so you can take little samples from um, our larger website um, at Between Us About Us and just take those and add them into your newsletter. We also have graphics that you can use to kind of make that um, information pop. And it's just another great way to add impact and share the conversation. Next slide. Um, so moving along, um, faith groups, they're also really embracing the conversation between us about us. So in this slide, you can see an example of a live event that we did um, in early March. Um, so the Ebenezer Baptist Church actually screened the videos of the conversation to their uh, um, congregants, and um, it was just a really great event to uh, see the conversation essentially come to life. Um, we're also working with the Conference of National Black Churches, um, who are working to train Black pastors in sharing more um, content about uh, the COVID vaccines to their communities. Um, and then in addition, we're also working with the American Muslim Health Professionals um, Association for outreach to the Muslim faith community as well. And so if you have these networks of faith in your own community, really think about sharing the series with them um, in order to just you know, promote the conversation more widely. Next slide, please. Barbershops um, are another great example um, of community, especially for the Black community. Um, like hair salons, for um, a lot of Black women like myself, um, there are places to discuss a lot of topics um, that are often quieted in the community. And so in late March, um, the Sacramento Black Media Coalition had a virtual event featuring a popular barber, local physician, and well-known entertainers to discuss COVID. Um, and then they streamed the conversation videos as part of their event. And so this should provide you with an example of how to use the videos into your own event, whether that's on a Zoom or um, on StreamYard or Facebook Live, really just using the content um, in the way that works best for your community. Next slide, please. Um, it can also be as easy as including a link to the conversation in your existing resource materials. Um, so this is an example from This Is Our Shot, which is a grassroots doctor's initiative. Um, and so if you look to the very bottom of this screenshot, you can see that they link directly to the conversation. And so that's easy to do, just put the link in there. Um, and then you're sharing your own existing content while also adding in the conversation. Next slide. Um, and it's also um, <laughs> as simple as playing snippets of the conversation um, on a radio station. So this is an example um, called The Colors of COVID Barbershop and Salon Talk. Um, and it was held on a very popular radio show in the DC area, um, 93.9 WKYS. Um, and so you can see Dr. Boyd in this screenshot um, speaking about the COVID vaccines um, with some other local physicians. And speaking of radio, lots of radio examples. Um, here's an example from Livingston um, College. And so they reached out specifically um, to share the conversation on their college radio station. And so um, at this time, we do have downloadable radio PSAs in our toolkit. Um, and so you can actually take those PSAs and then add them into your existing um, radio station. Next slide. Um, yes, and it's also as simple as sending um, an email out to your uh, students or your staff or your faculty. So this is an example. Um, the Vice President of Institutional Advancement, Jeff Sellers um, at Arkansas Baptist College um, had reached out to him and said, hey, we have this great campaign. Um, can you share it out to your, your student body? And so he's more than happy to. Um, and so this is simply um, someone sending out an email to your student listserv about the conversation. And what was really great about it is he actually linked it back to um, 
students signing up for an appointment um, to get you know, a vaccine if they were available. Um, and so linking the campaign to a call of action is very, very effective. Um, in addition to this example, um, another uh, university um, is focusing on printing out flyers. So we also have flyers in our toolkit. So you can print those out and post them around campus, especially as more conversations are happening about campuses reopening um, and as well posting on social media too. And then my last example, um, we want the conversation to reach school age kids as well, so primary school. Um, so for one other example, um, we're working with Chicago Public Schools, which is one of the largest um, school systems in the nation, um, to get these videos not only to the employees, but also finding ways to um, immerse the content for academic enrichment opportunities for students um, ages 12 through 16. So those are just a few examples. A lot's been happening. A lot of folks have been using the conversation. Um, so yeah. Oh, and then I do want to share um, another video right here. So I talked a little bit earlier about the importance of young people um, knowing really what's going on um, with the COVID vaccines. And so um, Dr. Sinsnacki talks um, a little bit more about that in this video. So a couple of reasons. So one, doesn't mean you won't get sick. <laughs> so younger people can get sick. Younger people can have um, uh, what we call morbidity or lasting illness. They may not die from it, but they may have ongoing lung problems or neurologic problems or other things like that. Um, but I think the other thing that we think about in pediatric is um, what is your risk in your community? So you know, I just told you we have a bunch of children who cannot get the vaccine, but if you are, let's say, 18 year old who gets COVID infection and you give it to a five year old and then they go visit grandma who's 80 years old, now you've infected someone who uh, may die from it. Right, so I mean, that's just another um, important example of why we want this campaign to reach um, our young people as well. Um, so a lot, again, as I mentioned, a lot has been happening on the community engagement side. Um, if you have any examples of how you use the conversation, um, I'm gonna put my contact information in the chat because um, we'd love to hear it. Thank you so much. Chelsea, thank you for sharing all of those and for the past four months of making them all happen. Chelsea just every day is constantly in communication with all of these different networks of folks. And so most of those are example of examples are credit to her work and community engagement over the last few months. And she's just been an incredible part of the team. So thank you um, very much for creating the conversation in, in all of these interesting and inspiring ways. Um, to bring everyone some more insights and um, continue the inspiration. I think there's nothing like hearing from folks who have done it themselves. And uh, we have seen more than half of the states share, um, the health departments and others from states share on social media, the conversation. And we're really eager to have health departments in particular because of the central roles that you all play in in coordinating the COVID vaccine response nationally. I wanna give a shout out in particular to Rhode Island, a small state and super mighty on vaccine education. Every couple of days, they've got some new piece of the conversation um, that they're tweeting out or sharing out on social media. So an example of how to take something that exists that you can weave into your social media calendar. Um, and we encourage those states who have not yet or aren't on a, have us on a regular rotation, maybe you, Maybe you saw it when it launched in early March and haven't revisited it. Um, we encourage you to consider building it out and tapping into more than 50 and growing videos. So without further ado, I'd love to introduce you all to Dr. Martha Dominguez from the California Department of Public Health, who will be sharing how a large state, large state of California has been incorporating the conversation in their campaign and their vaccine education efforts. Welcome Dr. Thank you, and um, thank you all for having us in this space. I also have my colleague, um, Diana Macias Carlos, who's joining um, myself and all of you. Um, first of all, we were, um, it was love at first sight. 
when we first seen the creative, um, we were in the midst of really finalizing our first phase of our formative research. Um, we've been doing formative research since November um, and we are continuing both doing a qualitative and quantitative and some of the, it really is to assessing attitudes and beliefs here in California, in particular focusing on disproportionate communities such as African-Americans, Latinos, Native American, Asian Pacific Islander. And one of the things that we learned is that um, there were so many other factors and barriers that were really um, triggering or really um, uh, causing vaccine hesitancy beyond vaccine information. And that's really where we started to see the social determinants of health of different factors really come to the forefront. Um, the systematic social, cultural, economic influences, emotional influences that the pandemic has had in, in particular communities of color, the behavior and cognitive repercussions as a result of the various different types of information that have rolled within the last year and all of us have encountered um, very politicized, the science being questioned, the process, just been different factors, economic um, stress that our families have um, been impacted and then it's also, you know, the vaccine information. So um, when we first seen the conversation, it really was something that fit really nicely to the glove of our strategy and also the messaging. Um, and also to, it was just done in a, in a way that allowed us to engage in particular the African-American community, but also other communities of color um, that really had similar questions, you know, in terms of that, um, you know, the, microchip, the, alter, um, the alternating of the DNA, um, just the messaging really aligned with the Department of Public Health and also in California. And it really addressed a lot of the social factors, but most importantly, it also addressed some of our research that we already were identifying in terms of empowering communities. It really was building that trust and mitigating any fear or any mis or disinformation. And that is through, you know, black doctors. One of the things that we've heard from our qualitative research research is that people want to see people like them make the progress, people like them being part of the solution and in a very positive and very humorous way that allows people to engage. And that's what this video does. And it really has the right messengers. Sometimes the messenger is more important than the message and it just really fit really nicely. And overall, it just helps us disseminate information. So as a result of our research, and it, it was just a nice combination, it's probably one of our best formulas to date. And so we really are so proud to partner with Kaiser Family Foundation and all the wonderful doctors. And um, not only did they have our colleague here from California, the comedian Bao from Oakland, California. So that added to the flavor of us moving forward. But we also put some paid advertisement to this creative, um, particularly on social and digital. Um, it's also part of our community toolkit and our Vaccinate All 58 website, but also the department's um, website as well. So all of our local health departments have really um, now engaged on the conversation themselves and we're adding the toolkit that um, the, the team has developed and also to making sure that they track Chelsea's social media platforms. Most importantly, we are wanting to make sure that we're all part of the solution and that we empower people to make the right decision. We recognize that maybe the timing of when people make the decision to get vaccinated varies by eligibility, but it could also vary about when people feel comfortable. We know that a lot of our communities of color, particularly the African-American community are in the wait and see category they want to see how um, others react and before they take the shot. And but we're also seeing that that empowers them to make that right decision. It really adds this really friendly social pressure along the way. And in here in California, we want to make sure that our communities of color are have the best and, and latest information, but make the most informed decisions so they can protect their families and, and, and loved ones along the way. So for us, it was just a perfect fit, as I, as I said, and we're so happy that Robin and the team and Dr. Boyd um, allowed us to be a part of this journey with them. And we're, we're just so excited to continue to amplify the work. And we can't wait to see what you have for the Latino community because I can foresee a partnership right around the corner. So, um, and it's just aligning with the research that we have. So thank you. I want big kudos for the team and thank you for allowing us to be a part of this partnership.
Thank you, Martha and Diana, for your vision of seeing how we can integrate. You know, you have all been building out your own campaigns over the last months. They're brilliant, educating Californians in ways that are specific to California, featuring Californians. And the, the visual that's on the slide right now is your website with some of your videos and some of our videos blended. So I just think it's an you're really at the vanguard of helping us see too the potential um, to leverage resources from the conversation to support and enhance what, what you all are all doing. So thank you very, very much for um, laying the groundwork and helping us see the, the opportunities. And we look forward to sharing that next with you as well. Um, we would like to jump to the other coast now, uh, to Montgomery County, Pennsylvania. I'd love to introduce to you all Ms. Beth Till, who runs Immunization Coalition Communications. Um, and she, Beth popped onto my screen because we just kept seeing tweets after social media <laughs> posts after like who is this Montgomery County Immunization Coalition um, and so I reached out uh, when we were building out the webinar as someone who had clearly been tapping into the resources and building her own um, building the conversation into into her own work and her partnership work and the, the backstory of course was as I hoped um, really interesting and I hope you'll enjoy hearing from Beth Till. Sounds great and I'm glad you found me. And we absolutely love, love this campaign. Um, so if you can switch to the next slide, Robin, I'd like to introduce our wonderful Small But Mighty Coalition. I uh, just want to give you a little bit of background about Montgomery County Immunization Coalition. Uh, it actually was founded back in 2003. And our mission is to promote age appropriate immunizations across the lifespan for all our residents in our county. Uh, we are the, actually the third largest county in the state of Pennsylvania, and we have about 830,000 uh, residents, so we're much smaller than California. Uh, the coalition is uh, comprised of dedicated individuals from the county, schools, nonprofits, and community. So back in July, we started building a flu and COVID-19 committee, as you see on this slide, and we're really focused on the education and outreach communication campaigns with the goal to encourage all our residents to get vaccinated once vaccine becomes available to them. So I am thrilled every time I look at this slide, it brings a big smile to my face because we have 99 individuals representing 62 diverse partner organizations across our county. And we meet monthly uh, for us all to get together because we really want to foster creativity share our resources because again we're a very small you know kind of county so we really need to rely on each other and we really want to engage in a coordinated approach across our county so we have uh, put special focus to identify and engage our trusted racial ethnic and cultural group leaders and organizations to really help us build confidence throughout our county and with the vaccine so we actively engage these organizations in all phases of the planning. So it's planning, design, and implementation of any community engagement that we have. We really want to ensure that we provide clear, accurate, and most importantly, culturally appropriate messages. Um, we share credible information across multiple formats for high-level engagement that really um, reach different segments um, of our community. Um, they include social media, our e-partner updates, website, town halls, billboards. And I'm gonna give you just a high level overview of these engagements. I'll put my contact information in the chat. We'd love to collaborate, we'd love to share. So if you see anything on here that you would like to reach out to me, please feel free to do so. And we'd also like to learn from you as well. So next slide. So we post regularly on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and LinkedIn to engage our communities. Um, our communities of color in our county are at the higher risk for COVID-19 and tend to have a lower vaccination rate, things that we have seen historically across the nation. So when we saw the conversation, I was thrilled. It definitely made my day because these were the tools that we needed in our county. And like everyone else, we don't have a huge budget. So we do really rely on these types of resources to get our message out. So again, when I saw that conversation video series with the black doctors and nurses dispelling misinformation and answering all those questions we're hearing in our county, I needed to make sure we took action and that we utilized this campaign in our county. So this slide shows samples of some of our social media posts sharing the conversation videos. And if you guys ever wanna check us out, we're at the tag at MCICPA. So again, MCICPA. Um, next slide. So as I mentioned earlier, we really leverage our partner organizations, those 62 organizations, really to amplify 
those culturally appropriate messages and resources across our county. So in addition to social media, we share out weekly ePartner updates with our partner organizations, um, and we really rely on them to get this information out. So as you can see on this slide, we shared the conversation video series with our partner organizations in several ePartner updates. And this slide shows examples of our county and our Office of Public Health sharing the videos on their social media. Next slide. We also partner with our county to share timely information across our county through their website. So Robin shared the link to that embedded Hello Black America anchor video, which I love, I absolutely love. And we were able to actually put it on our website. So as you can see on this slide, it shows how we were able to embed it right into our website. I highly encourage everyone on the call today, if they have a website, you need to add this on. Uh, we've heard positive feedback from our community partners on this video. Uh, we also work with our partner organizations to develop flyers and social media graphics in multiple languages. And these can also be found on our website in the downloads folder. So I definitely wanted to give a shout out and I'll put it in the chat box after my presentation. Please go in, check out our tools, feel free to use them. We love it when people share our materials. So feel free to use them. If you have any suggestions, please reach out to me. And I also wanted to share two other things that are really exciting and I thought would be beneficial to this group is in addition to the social media and the partner updates and the websites, we also have used town halls as an engagement strategy, something that our county has never done. So we partnered with our uh, organizations that I shared with you earlier, and we have hosted six virtual community town halls, bringing together those trusted community and healthcare leaders to discuss the myths, the facts, and we found that that two-way feedback really definitely helps and it allows people to ask questions, they feel heard, and to get the concerns addressed one-on-one -on -one in these community town halls. Uh, we have a total of 1,700 people that have registered for our six town halls, and we had 62,000 Facebook lives and 1,200 YouTube views. And we were just thrilled because we have never done town halls before January of this year. And again, I'll paste the town halls in the chat box, but I encourage everyone on the call today, it's definitely a great engagement strategy. And lastly, uh, just this week, uh, we found a little bit of funding. We don't usually get a lot of funding, but we found a little bit of funding to actually launch a billboard campaign targeting our communities of color during the month of May in both English and Spanish. So we are thrilled. But just want to thank you so much for uh, allowing MCIC to join this call and share how we have incorporated the amazing conversation campaign into our community engagement. So thank you so much. Beth, that was wonderful. Thank you so much. And there's just like example after example after example. It's just incredible to think about what's possible when you build a coalition and bring all of the resources of partners to the table. And I just can't imagine a, a better way to illustrate that. So congratulations to what you and your partners have built together. And um, I hope that some of the connections that have been made as a result of COVID-19 will continue to last all of us in public health beyond and create new ways of doing things, which uh, you are clearly paving the way for. So brilliantly done, thank you. We are oh, wow. coming up on time. And so I just wanna make sure that we answer the fundamental question of where do you get all this stuff? So um, this is the YouTube channel. All of the videos are here. It's at greater than COVID on youtube.com. And you could, this is where you can pull to embed, you can pull for social media. Um, we've arranged them all in playlists. So you can pull all of the FAQ videos or you can pull in groups by um, you know, general information or um, you can see some of the development, the effectiveness, the safety. And as you get down into some of those specifics about children, pregnancy, sexual health, seniors, um, and of course, we'll be adding to these over time. So certainly encourage you to check out the YouTube channel and be able to pull from here. Um, as our colleagues from California shared, we can do paid placements on YouTube. We get sort of a big boost nationally spread all around, um, contributed by Google and YouTube, but we can focus too on specific demographic populations, specific zip codes. If you have a budget to do paid media, K KFF can manage that, or we can work with your digital agency if there's somebody already on contract um, to make the files available to them. So think about those opportunities. It's just another website example from Fair Count. This is the group across the South that Chelsea had mentioned. They're using the 
lessons learned from census organizing to go door to door and help people navigate getting to vaccines. And they've included the conversation in their website, just pulling from that YouTube link as well. So that's one YouTube channel. Two is this toolkit. So we showed you earlier the website. You can get there between us about us.org. And um, Sammy, if I could ask you to drop the link into the chat so everyone has an easy way just to click over to that. This dual digital toolkit button, if you scroll down to it, will get you into this. So this is the conversation toolkit. This is the language that Chelsea was describing up top. You can easily pull into your newsletter or email, grab, copy paste, drop it in um, and share it around, linking into the campaign webpage so, or the YouTube channel so people have access to all the information. Um, I do see a question in the Q&A asking if a local health department needs any special permissions to post or link. We don't need to provide anything for, from our standpoint. You can see here, and if you need to direct your powers that be, that it is available rights-free for educational use. If you need a letter from us or there's some policy in place that you need sort of evidence of that, we're happy to provide. So please reach out and we're happy to um, make that statement in writing. We do just ask that you don't alter the videos that, you know, with the agreements we have with all of the participants that they, they stay intact. Um, this is another way to get to the YouTube page, essentially. And you can find that anchor video that we all watch together up top. There's a 30 second promo uh, that fits sort of the ad lengths for a lot of ad placements. And then each of the video FAQ playlists. Um, and, and my colleague Sammy has built out really easy to use instructions here. It's very simple to embed it in, um, in your website in the ways that uh, Beth and California and uh, others have. There are graphics. Um, these look great. They're designed for social media. They work on websites. They can pop into an e-news letter, um, download right here, pull them and link to where you'd like to link to, um, getting more questions answered into the campaign page, those sorts of things. There are broadcast quality PSAs. Those generally need to be 30 seconds, sometimes 15. Um, if you do have any partners that are donating media, you can grab them here, download them and share them with those partners. Um, there are opportunities if they're large paid promotions to co-brand these um, as we did with the California Department of Public Health. So if you'd like to talk about co-branding, we can talk through the logistics of those as well. It's a great way to reach folks, particularly who aren't on digital spaces, which is something that we're thinking a lot about. Um, and these flyers, these print flyers are another way to do that. So there are two different versions. They have a QR code in them that scans and takes you to the campaign website. So it's a way folks are putting them up in, Chelsea had mentioned the schools, we've had um, workplaces put them up, we've had community health centers put them up. We heard from a um, hotel, actually the reason we made them was a hotel wanted one to put by their coffee stand so that all of their clients could see them, which was brilliant, right? So wherever you are, whatever your opportunities are, both personally and professionally, um, these are easy to print, just a regular sheet of paper um, and up they go. We are also adding to these. So we're creating door hangers and palm cards and there'll be some other pieces coming to this, this print section as well. We really do wanna, you know, it's a digital campaign. It's a cheap and easy way to reach masses of people. Um, but we also wanna make sure that we're reaching those who are not digitally connected as well. Some social posts, um, feel free to get creative and write your own, but we are all strapped for time. So these are pre-written for you um, and easy to copy and paste multiple examples. You can mix and match the videos or the visuals. Um, and there's even a very cool new feature on here that you can just click right from the toolkit and it will populate a tweet. So I did it last night and it made this tweet for me and all I had to do was hit tweet and it would be there for me. So um, you can play with that. Hopefully we'll be able to build that out for Facebook and Instagram, some of the other platforms as well. And we would just love to stay in touch. So um, I wanna make sure that we dedicate the, the last few minutes to your questions. We will probably not be able to get to everything today. And I'm sure that there are specific circumstances um, for some of you. So please do reach out greater than at kff.org comes into our team and we'll make sure to match you up. Generally, Chelsea's responsible for community-based organizations and I'm working with health departments and where needed, we come together, we'll pull in others on, on our team. So um, please do reach out, let us know if you're having trouble finding anything, if today went by too fast and where was that thing again? Um, or if you just wanna share what, you're, what you've been doing, we would love to capture as part of our evaluation of the campaign, how folks are using it. And we know there are things going on out there that we've 
we don't know anything about. So you can be the connector and let us know. Um, I think we are now ready for our final audience poll. Um, so I'm going to pull up that slide and we would just like to know, are you planning to use the conversation? And if so, in what ways? Um, there are options here for playing the videos at a virtual or live event, like the town halls Beth described, an email listserv or newsletter, like the campus that message that went out that Chelsea showed, embedding videos on the website, we've seen multiple examples of that, posting on social media, using radio and TV PSAs, printing and hanging up or distributing the flyers, or something else. And if it's something else, we'd love to hear what that is in the chat because we there's hundreds of you. So there should be some really amazing creative ideas that we haven't thought of or, or seen someone else think of yet. And we look forward to seeing what those are. It looks like we've had 60% who have voted so far. So I'm just gonna wait a couple more seconds um, and make sure that we can get to Q&A. So let's close it in five, four, three, two, one, ta-da. <laughs> Look at that, social media all over the place. That's great, so easy thing to do, right? It costs nothing but a little bit of somebody's time. So we look forward to seeing you all continuing to use the conversation on social media. You should see on the back end, you know, we, we screenshot them and send them around and we get so excited. Um, it is really helpful if you hashtag between us about us and that way we can find you. Uh, if we're not already following you, we don't necessarily know that it's out there. So please remember to use the hashtag. Um, and it looks like folks are using in lots of other ways too. So great to see. Thank you for extending the conversation in your communities. And we hope that you'll add some more ways um, as a result of participating today. So I think we are now at the Q&A. Before, just before we close out, I do wanna let you know when you close Zoom, you'll be prompted to take a, a post webinar survey. And we really do invite your feedback. It's helpful to us to know if this was helpful to you and what we can do better in the future. And there's also an open-ended question there that you can add some more comments. So thank you in advance for doing that. Um, and let's turn now to the Q&A. We have a few in our, um, in our box. So the inbox says, is any of the video information available in other languages? Currently, the videos that we have are available in English. Um, we are producing Spanish language content now. And folks are welcome to take the video and add subtitles. It's maybe not, you know, if it works kind of culturally. So we're happy to talk about that. Um, we're a small team with limited resources. So we've been able to create what we've been able to create. But um, I know Beth had mentioned some of her resources that are multilingual and there are numerous other communications campaigns that have other languages as well. Autumn is asking, when will the Latinx content be available? We're aiming for mid-May. Uh, we literally just filmed yesterday um, and Thursday, Friday of last week. So there are 10 new healthcare workers. The, the video is captured and now there is a massive effort to quickly edit it as much as possible, have it all reviewed, make sure it's perfectly accurate, um, get it all posted to YouTube. It is, there's so much work that um, my colleagues do to get everything ready to show you all the pretty things, as we say. So um, aiming for mid-May, and we will be announcing to everyone on our on our newsletter list. So please do stay in touch and obviously share, follow social media, we'll be posting, posting there as well. Um, if you have ideas of organizations that work specifically with Latinx or Hispanic audiences, and um, we're building out a lot of resources around immigration questions in particular, making folks know their rights in terms of accessing vaccines. Um, if, you, if they'd like to join, please rec refer them to the website. Um, or if you'd like to mention names of organizations, we're happy to add them find contacts there and add them as, as well in as well so that we have as robust a distribution list as possible. Um, I know this is old school, but are there DVDs? That is old school in the sense that I have not been able to play a DVD in my house for a couple of years, but I understand absolutely and validate the question and appreciate it. it's a good one, um, particularly because I know there are settings like some clinics and other spaces where, that may not have internet access or the way to get something on the screen in that room is through a DVD. So Ms. Rita, if you wouldn't mind emailing us, um, we may be able to just print one. We just need to figure out what you, what format you need and which videos you'd like on it and see if we can burn those with our um, in-house IT folks. We may be able to, to meet that. So thank you very much for that question. We don't want technology to be the barrier to the accessing information. Um, 
Will this recording of the webinar be available? We wanna share with partners, absolutely. So we'll be sending out an email to everyone who's participated um, after, after this and making sure that you have access to this long-term. I believe it's gonna be uploaded on YouTube. So if there's a snippet that you'd like to rewatch, um, that would be great. And I am seeing it is 1.59 and probably like many of you, I have a Zoom call right after this. <laughs> So thank you for spending more time on Zoom with us. I'm sorry that was like rapid round of Q&A. Um, I was hoping that we'd have a little bit more time for discussion with our, our panelists, um, but I hope that this was really helpful to everyone who participated. We thank you very much for joining the conversation and for engaging with the conversation um, in the ways that you've used it to date and in the ways that you'll use it going forward. Please join me in thanking Beth and Martha and Diana and Chelsea for co-presenting and sharing and inspiring all of us with the incredible work that they're doing. We wish you a great day. This is the conclusion of the webinar and we look forward to being in touch over the time. Thank you.